Hey everyone, so today I've got a super exciting video for you. We are gonna be building a game of Candy Crush. When I teach online, I always try to keep in mind that however advanced I get, I always really try not to use technical words way too much. If I do use a technical word, I will introduce it in a really soft way as to not put people off. I think when I was starting out and I had an amazing mentor, he was really good. Uh, he was a great developer. However, his teaching was maybe a little bit hard to grasp for me as someone who, you know, I didn't do computer science. I wasn't uh, around these big words, these big technical words. And I think sometimes a developer can forget that. And it is important to, you know, describe things in a way that anyone can understand. And I do think it's hard. I, I'm still learning how to do it. I always encourage people to, you know, uh, let me know if something is still too technical. And part of the fun for me is really breaking it down in a way that is digestible to as many people and as many languages as possible, right? Because we live in such a uh, global world now, everything's becoming smaller and smaller. And communication throughout all languages is something that's really important to me. I mean, that's what software development is in a way solving. It's a language that anyone can get behind. When we make Candy Crush, we have to make a grid, right? And this is all about manipulating the DOM. When I first learned to do anything with the DOM at all, I was just like, whoa, this is incredible. Before that, all I was really doing is working with arrays and learning how to add something to an array or subtract something to an array, the standard stuff. However, as soon as we started manipulating the DOM in the coding bootcamp that I was in, I think it was about week two, my mind was just like blown. It felt really satisfying, you know, to be able to make something visually move on the browser. I was like, wow, I'm doing this. So that for me was the first time I was like, wow, JavaScript is incredible. To be honest, I went into the coding bootcamp because I don't really know many people that were software developers. At school, computers to me were sort of pitched as boring, not something that I was really interested in or I thought I was interested in. And I went through school just thinking, nah, that's not for me. However, after school, I was actually working in finance and started my own startup, which included me actually building the website for the startup. And by building website, I mean taking a super simple template, one before the Wix and Weeblies. It was really, really bad. And because I didn't really like what I was given, I attempted to change the CSS and a bit of the HTML. And I was hooked. I was like, oh my God, what is this? And from then on, I was like, I need to know more of this. I signed up to a boot camp. I did some research and went to one here in London, which was amazing. And I had a really good time. It was immersive. It was a three month immersive course where I went to lessons. I got to meet other people who were also on this path to becoming software developers. And it was the first time I was really surrounded by computer people and they were boring. It was so much fun. I really um, had one of the best times there. <laughs> So after we create the grid in Candy Crush, the next part is actually randomly generating colors to fill all the grids. And this for me involved a lot of learning about the math JavaScript object, which originally I thought software development was all about. I thought it was just maths, which is great. I liked maths. I majored in maths at school. However, when I started learning software development, especially JavaScript, I was like, Okay, this is not just math. I was completely wrong. It's much more, I always compare learning software development to learning a language because you essentially need to learn how to talk a certain way to your computer. If this, then that. That's essentially what you are learning. You'll give your computer a list of things to do in that format. This wasn't something that I was aware of. And when I did find this out, I was like, okay, I'm completely out of my depth. Like JavaScript is hard. And it did take me a while to get accustomed to this way of speaking. And I say again, language, speaking to a computer, just because that's the way I like to think of it. However, once I was finally able to grasp it, it was like riding a bike. And that's what I tell everyone who's really struggling with JavaScript at the beginning as well. 
So the next part I want to talk to you about is getting matches of candies. Now this involves a lot of array work, especially JavaScript methods uh, like for each and every. And I found these pretty hard when I was starting out. I was actually going through a breakup at the time in the coding bootcamp, so I wasn't able to concentrate. In fact, the whole day I was just like, my mind was completely somewhere else. And that just meant that I fell behind and had to teach myself this in my spare time. And I think that's why I now love teaching these subjects because it really forced me to understand something by myself. So apply self-teaching rather than just being, you know, told this is how it works. And for that, I'm really grateful for. I think it's something that I now have taken and, you know, built a career around in becoming a YouTube software developer online and teaching other people how to grasp concepts that I originally found tricky. In Candy Crush, we also have to move candies down. And again, this is array work. So one of my favorite things to teach now, for loops as well are included in this. And I really think that the brilliance of teaching people how to learn software development by games is because we get exposed to so so much. If you think about moving candies down, there's so much that happens in that. We look at for loops, we look at array work. We essentially have to figure out the indexes and the squares in order to find out if the square below, so using maths in that array work, using modulus, you have to figure out if the square directly below is empty and if it is, you change the color of that square to the current square and make that repeat over and over and over again. Yeah, just so much. And I really think that's why games, or why I choose to teach through games, uh, it really pushes people uh, to think outside the box in terms of the standard stuff you're taught in textbooks. The next thing that we look at when we build Candy Crush is the timing events, because we need to carry out checks for three or four, or checks for if we need to move all the candies down very often, so I make it all on a loop. I check every 500 milliseconds for all these things. And half the fun, especially when I create tutorials, is to really encourage people to be like, right, okay, we've just built this game. How would you approach this? Or perhaps ask them to approach building the game by themselves. And then if they can't, refer to the tutorial. So yeah, I mean, there's so much possibility in creating games. There's so much creativeness in the problem solving that we as software developers uh, can explore. There's definitely a lot of creativeness that uh, software development brings to my life. Thousands of developers find jobs across Europe using Honeypot. If you're up for a new challenge in one of these European cities, sign up at honeypot.io. If you want to see more tech documentaries, then subscribe so you don't miss the next one.